Hey and welcome to the mixing process. Usually on this channel I talk a lot about the how-to's of mixing or different mindsets that will help you improve your mixes. But as I've studied and learned from a lot of skilled engineers over the years, I found that for me some of my biggest learning moments actually happened when they told me stories of mistakes they've made bad habits they've formed and eventually figured out how to correct, or specific light bulb moments where a concept that they knew for a long time finally clicked for them in a really practical way. And that's what I'm hoping to do for you today, because in this video I want to share two reasons why I struggled with compression for so long and how I've learned to use it more effectively over the years. So if you struggle with using compression on your tracks, this video might be just the thing to help you out. So stick around, see what you can learn. All right. The, for, for the longest time, I was afraid to make drastic moves in mixing, especially with EQ and compression, because I've always heard people say things like a little bit goes a long way, or compress until you get 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction, or you only need 2 to 3 dB cuts in EQ. And though there's wisdom in not over-processing everything every chance you get, Sometimes, heavily processing tracks is necessary to achieve the sound that we're looking for. And this is a lesson I had to learn recently, especially with vocal compression. I would often set up my vocal compressor to get 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction, only to feel like it wasn't really compressing enough to get the vocal under control in the loudest parts of the song. And every time I saw the gain reduction meter go over about 6 dB, I'd get nervous and kind of back the compressor off. I felt trapped between following the arbitrary 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction rule in my mind and also getting my vocals to sound the way that I wanted them to sound. Now, the reason I struggled with compression in this way was twofold. First, I was afraid to break what I had in my mind as a rule of compression. At one point early on in my mixing journey, somebody had taught me to use very small movements when I was mixing. And these small mov movements would add up to make big positive changes to the mix. But this mindset also created in me a fear of going overboard in my processing to the point where I was I would never push the limits. I felt like I had to keep every adjustment really small and subtle. The lesson I had to learn though was that no matter where you are in the journey, you have to train your ears and then you have to discipline yourself to trust your ears no matter what your eyes or the rules tell you. And in my case, I had to learn that it's okay to get not just 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction, but maybe even 6 to 10 or maybe more if that's what the input's required to get under control and to sound good. And sometimes you'll feel like you're doing it wrong whenever you make a drastic move, but part of learning is pushing those limits and seeing how the inputs respond to those moves. Sometimes that's the best way to learn. Just push it hard and kind of see what happens. The second reason I struggled with compression was because every time I used a compressor, I'd lose volume on that track. Obviously, that's how a compressor works but it made the track lose some of its presence in the mix sometimes. And the loss in volume would make me question if I was really doing it right, reinforcing the fear of over-processing like we talked about earlier. And what I didn't fully realize is that compressors have a parameter to compensate for this effect called makeup gain. This parameter increases the gain of the signal post-processing to get the signal back up to a good level. So you do a bunch of gain reduction and then the makeup gain knob takes the process signal and turns it up. So even if you have to do a huge amount of gain reduction on a specific track, you can crank that makeup gain up and get that track back up to a good level 
post-processing. All right, so that's kind of what that's for. But some of you are probably thinking, well, duh, the, all of these answers to all of these problems are not exactly revolutionary. And you would be correct. But the point of this is that sometimes it takes time or someone stating obvious basic concepts a hundred times before the things we know about mixing really sink in and become fully understood by us at a practical level. And my hope is that by sharing these little revelations I've had w had over the years about compression, something might click in your mind in a way that hasn't clicked before. So these, again, these two things that I really struggled with, just being okay with pushing the limits and figuring out how the inputs responded, and then learning even just a basic parameter of a plugin that I had used a hundred times before. Sometimes, you know, it takes some time for that stuff to click, and then it can actually really be useful. So, hopefully, telling you these things was helpful for you. Hopefully, something kind of clicked in your mind and in your process. And speaking of going back to the basics, if you haven't already downloaded my free mixing guide, be sure to do that today because it's a great starting point for anyone wanting to learn the basics of mixing in a really practical, systematic way. And you can get this guide completely for free on my website, themixingprocess.com. You can also reach me with any questions you have um, about the guide or anything in mixing as well. So hopefully this was helpful to somebody today. Thanks for watching. Go be great at what you do. I will see you on the next one.